The ultimate driving machine is a statement that BMW has used for better part of the last, I want to say 10, 15 years because BMW prides itself on performance cars that are both luxury and great driving, great performing automobiles. Well, I'm here to tell you today that this thing is not the ultimate driving machine. So what is this? This is a 2018 BMW X1. It is an S drive, meaning it's two wheel drive. S drive 28i. That means it's the little four cylinder, which I don't even think you could get the inline six. And this, no, you can't, it's only four cylinder. So you can either get this in S drive, meaning two wheel drive or X drive, four wheel drive. So this thing right here is BMW's attempt to compete with cars such as the Honda HRV, the Infiniti QX, I think 30, the Mercedes GLA, stuff like that. By the way, I'm not a fan of those cars, so you could kind of see where we're going with this. This is a lame attempt at creating something that doesn't need to be there. There is no reason this thing should exist. If they drop this down a little bit more, or leave it as it is, but flesh out the body more, make it into a wagon, like a station wagon, this thing would look awesome. Make the front end a little bit look a little bit better because it feels like it's too too put smushed up if that makes any sense. But make it more fledged out, make it a station wagon, and I would love this. The problem is, I don't even know what this thing's trying to do because it's trying to be a luxury car, it's trying to be a subcompact, it's trying to be at a reasonable price. It's just trying too much, if that makes any sense. There's just too much going on here and none of it works well with each other. So this is sort of an attempt at getting into a market that BMW shouldn't really be focusing on. They have great SUVs like the X5, the X3. They have performance versions of those. They have great cars like the 3 Series. It's a, it's a staple in like the luxury car market. This doesn't need to be a thing. Now, the X1 was created in 09 for the European market to, again, compete with those, the cars I mentioned. And this thing came to the States in 2012 and 13. That's when it was released here. That's when it became an, you know available for purchase. And in 2015, it got updated to this. This is called the F82, I believe. I could be wrong. As you guys can see, I'm not the biggest BMW person, but when it was refreshed, it was obviously a lot better of a car. So the first generation is horrendous. The interior is horrible. It's just not a good car. And they're actually pretty bad when it comes to reliability. This one, on the other hand, it's better, but again, it's lackluster. And I'm gonna show you guys what I mean when we get inside of it. But as you guys can see, it has decent looking wheels. I mean, it's not the worst looking car BMW has ever produced, but it's also just a lame attempt at doing too much. So in 2018, of course, I got a refresh because that's when a lot of the models got refreshed. We had the 2019 three series come out the new generation. And yeah, so the whole lineup got refreshed. It got the more updated b48 inline four motor which is what this one has it's a good motor and it's decently quick well in this one not really but that motor specifically it's nice but let's go ahead and take a look at that interior and let me show you guys why i think this thing is such a letdown so first things first this is a luxury sub subcompact excuse me but it has no keyless entry none of that stuff so here's the key this is the newer style bmw key i like it it's nice this one is plastic it feels cheap if you get like an m5 or something they're metal and they're really nice but this one is just it's a lame attempt again so regardless you have to come up push the button it'll unlock itself pull the door handle and you're greeted with uh just why just why i mean it's it's got the fake leather that bmw uses I, I don't know what they call it. mercedes calls theirs mb techs um i don't know what bmw calls it but let's go ahead and hop in and i'm gonna show you guys exactly what i mean so oh, there's good headroom i mean for sure i mean it is a suv so there's good headroom in here no complaint against that my first my complaining starts with this i mean i'm okay i'm a i'm a decently sized guy i'm six feet tall um and I, my legs are wider so I don't fit very well in the seat. I mean, like if I'm driving normally, like my seats are, my, my legs are sticking out out of the seat. So this isn't, this is kind of harsh. So it's not really comfortable to, you know, just be like this constantly. And it's just, the problems start there and they just keep on going. So let's go ahead and start this thing. Foot on the brake. 
it is push button as all bmws are you put your foot on the brake and the buttons right here you guys can see it's already peeling off because the material is cheap okay so typical the b48 in line four as i said is a good motor sounds good um not no complaints against that but let's look at this so let's go ahead and close this door first thing you notice when you touch it is just listen to this if if i was doing this in a base model honda h h what is it hrv or whatever they call it and i'm not sure what the toyota variant is but that's fine because those cars are lower priced you expect if you buy a base or model sure it's going to be plastic but this car was in the higher 30s i mean this is just too much plastic everywhere the door handles feel cheap when you close the door if it doesn't feel solid um the interior materials in here i personally really don't like this shifter i kind of wish that they had just left a normal bmw shifter would have been fine this is kind of weird i mean it's it's also very flimsy a lot of these buttons right here just don't feel solid like this button kind of you know it, it it is what it is i mean it's not the worst as i said but you could see it's peeling because of the materials used and it's just it, it's a very weird styled interior if that makes any sense because it, it's just I don't, I don't know you guys are probably gonna you know in the comments be like well what do you expect you know it's a subcompact i understand that but that's why i'm saying this thing shouldn't even exist like what is the point of this car but regardless of that um you do get you know the typical bmw i drive so the menu's down here you just you hold that and you can mess with it it is pretty pretty good responsive because the same i drive that they use in you know every bmw so you can do you can mess with it it's it's all right it's not the greatest one this is obviously a lower end version of it because you get the smaller screen and everything you do have all your radio stuff over here and then you have all your climate control buttons over here um that's good that they're actual buttons i like that you know i'm a big fan of that this specific one does not have a sunroof it's not option for it and honestly it's sort of just a more baser like baser nx one so yeah you get some storage down here with an usb outlet you get some cup holders up there um, the gauges, they look good. Uh, typical BMW gauges, I don't mind them. You have your gas gauge, your MPG. So they don't look the worst. They're decently styled in that retrospect. But um, the whole problem is also when you're driving this vehicle, it's just everything creaks, everything makes noise. It's all plasticky and it's just, like I said, you guys are probably gonna be like, well, what do you expect? You know, you're bashing this car because of all this, right? But this car prides itself, anywhere you look, it prides itself on being a luxury subcompact. It's not a subcompact, it's a luxury subcompact. You can't compare this to a, let's say a, the, the Honda or the Toyota, because those cars are labeled as subcompact. They know what market they're in. And they, they're not out there trying to be like, oh, well, we're luxury, we have all this stuff inside. I mean, sure, this, this is all right for, I don't know, somebody who's just looking for the next step up in the subcompact, but it's, it's just, it, it seems like BMW's lackluster attempt at creating a subcompact vehicle, if that makes any sense. But that's pretty much it for this whole interior in here. Let's go ahead and check out the back and see how the back seat room is. So, because it is an SUV, it's gonna have good space in the back. Oh. So it's, it's all right, it's not the worst. I mean, I have seen worse seating, obviously. But again, I have the seat set up the way I like it in the front. So I don't have the best amount of leg room, it's all right. I mean, I'm not completely against the seat. And if I do close this door, you know, I do have some decent room back here. Uh, Headroom's pretty good because it is an SUV. So yeah, that, that's all right. Um, I have decent room. As long as nobody tries to sit in the middle and only one other person's over here, it'd be all right. But I mean, I mean, yeah, what do you expect? It's a subcompact, right? So it's not gonna be as luxurious as like the X5 or something. So in terms of cargo area back here it is decent um you do get a good amount you can drop obviously the back seats and you have more room if you're carrying some it does not have a spare tire it does have the stupid run flat stuff that's kind of annoying but yeah you do get this little parcel shelf which of course you can take off um because it is sort of a hatchback design so you can see into it. it's not that tall and you get some storage over here on the side over there as well and yeah this one obviously because it's luxury it does have a power opening and closing rear door so that's nice but yeah let's go ahead and take a look at that motor so this right here 
is BMW's inline four twin power turbo, meaning that it has a single turbo, but it acts like it's a twin scroll turbo. So basically it's, it's constantly in boost, really good. There's no lag, no nothing. Um, and it's paired to a nice transmission as well. In this iteration, it makes about 189 horsepower and I wanna say about 170-ish pound-feet of torque. So it's not the best, but it's also not, I mean, this thing isn't going out to be a sports car. At least it's not claiming that it is, right? It's not claiming that it's fast or anything, cause it's not. But just because of this, this is a good powertrain. This is, in my opinion, the only redeeming factor of this whole vehicle is the powertrain because it's a nice powertrain and it's reliable. It's decent and reliable. You know, these things have, proven themselves over the past few years but yeah all right you guys let me know what do you guys think about the x1 am i just being too harsh am i do i not know what i'm talking about or do i maybe have a point because <laughs> it's not the greatest thing out there you guys i mean it's it, it it gets the job done i guess if you're looking for a little suv to that has leather seats and all that to get you around town it i guess it'll do the job but it's just it's trying to do too many things at the same time and it just doesn't do them all that well like i said this ge second generation is a lot better than the first gen and i have seen some pictures of the newer one like the third generation x1 which looks it actually looks pretty good the interior looks nice so we'll see how that goes maybe i'll be you know converted over at that point if i see one of those but we'll see but at this point i don't think i would ever buy this you guys let me know let me know what you guys think about the x1 is it something you would consider or you know is it just bmw's lackluster attempt at getting into a market that they really shouldn't be in i'd love to hear what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next video take it easy